Okay, you guys, we're back on live. We lost the feed there for a minute. Is the top part of real cavings? That's the real cavings? Re no, real, real, real. Oh my God. Yeah. Hey, we don't play. Oh my God. And Betsy decorated it. They put beautiful. the frosting on the bakery. Just a beautiful she put all the flags and oh. cutouts and she did it gorgeous. Okay, day. you guys, we're back. With all the different nationalities of flags and people and the little caricatures and we're gonna we'll do a little pre. We're gonna save our best for first. Your first our first guest will be Mr. Vincent Patterson. <laughs> and he has a lot to say. It's all a little tease. We're gonna eat a little tease. So here's the cake. Hopefully the feed is good. You guys listen, uh, so the feed went out once already, so YouTube Live as a backup on Happy Michael Jackson Day. Uh, Betsy has the YouTube feed over there, so she's down watching uh, Michael. And uh, Betsy's going to come over. Don't push it though with the Michael, or the, the, we get blocked. He paused, so he was just... He was just Okay, so we're gonna he we're gonna head up there, Vincent. Show the show the YouTube the people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. YouTube, there's Vincent. Facebook people, here's Mr. Vincent. I told them we're putting the best on first, so Vincent's up in about five minutes. Get your popcorn, get your water. He said he has a lot to say. I have a lot to share today. Wow. Okay. A lot so, to share. all right. Thank you, sir. Plus, he's got YouTube. If, if Wendy or someone, just give it to her. Okay, I'm good. Uh, okay. I'm good. Nice. All right. All right, we're going to walk up here. I'm going to show you the Big Al's. Uh, we got Big Al slideshow going on up front here. Maybe right. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's fine. No, no, yeah, yeah. Hang on, I just want to see if we get a nice. Beth, why don't you get a seat? Beth. Bunch of things to share. Beth, why don't you get a chair? If you want it, you can just join. Okay. You got a streaming on YouTube. Okay. Listen, you guys share this if you could. Um, we're gonna do Vincent first. Vincent's, uh, we got him, uh, it's the start of his vacation. He's been nice enough to do this. So we're gonna put him on first and then we'll we'll actually start. Uh, for those, um, so for those, we're gonna do the bubbles. We're gonna do bubbles auction. I'm going down to bubbles again in November and December. So we're gonna do it then. So we're gonna do Vincent first and then we're gonna start with little Aubrey and music and you saw the cake and uh, we have videos to play and other people that have sent in videos from Michael's from Michael's life, but this man, this man came in person. Matt Forger, too, on the way, so that'll be fun. And uh, John Muto from Heal LA. Actually, Elizabeth, can you grab one more chair for over? Actually, two more people might be coming. Okay. You just sit right there. All right. Vincent's getting ready. It's backstage. Uh, where's Big Al? Where is Big Al? Security, security. There's Big Al, everyone. All right. Play. No. Play the. Vincent is look. No, the Zoom is done, you guys. No Zoom. We're going to see what went wrong. We're going to do it again Tuesday from Forest Lawn. All right. So hold your gloves, save everything. Chairs. I told him to get chairs from back no, there. No, for the two people. Cli uh, start with the Vincent uh, video. Okay. And, and then they'll probably listen to you and say, okay, can everybody be quiet? Or, and then I switch. Okay. Hi. Okay, before we start with Vincent. Big out, crank the volume. Oh, nice to see you. Crank it up. 
was she said she was going to see me today, and I thought she met on YouTube or something, you know? I didn't know in person. Vincent, turn around for a minute before we start. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Simmer, right? Right, let it build. Here's it one build. of my many, many favorite moments of this man. Alright, people, war troll. <laughs> we had we had right. Renee on the camera right. this day. It was the 40 year anniversary of Beat It. And there he was. Talk a little about the amazing super. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. It's one of the great moments, I ha honest to God, when those doors went up. Keep, watch the dance, watch the dance. Showing the next guest. All right, that was then, and this is now. With great pleasure, our first guest. We saved the best for first. The legendary Mr. Vincent Patterson. Everybody, give it up for Vincent. Hi, everybody. Thank you for doing this. It means the world to us. Oh, are you kidding? My gosh. Well, I have a lot of things to share today. So. Um, just to get it out of the way before I wish Michael a happy birthday, of course, is I want to talk a little bit about the wonderful things that's happening with my book and so much because of all of the support of, of all the Michael Jackson fans out there who have been so kind to purchase my book. So it's still available on Amazon.com, but a couple wonderful things. First, because it's been so successful, um, Amazon is having only for the month of September a special promo. It's a dollar ninety nine for the ebook for the month of September. So if you're interested and you didn't want to spend that money for a hard copy or whatever, a dollar ninety nine for the ebook for the month of September. I mean, I, I feel like I'm on the what, what is that network channel where they're selling everything. <laughs> but, but anyway, in the next the thirty seconds, seconds right, order now. Um, and then the one other thing that's so wonderful is Laura from from Madrid put me in touch with a publishing company who is now pub publishing the book in Spanish. Oh, and wow. It's called Iconos y Instintos. Mm -hmm. And, um... Wait, excuse me, can you say the name again in Spanish? Which one? Sí, uh, Iconos y Instintos. Oh, dice que, está, uh, que va a hacer un libro. Okay. Sí. Yeah, go, go. No, that's okay. Icons and Instincts. Okay. Icons and Instincts. And anyway, you can purchase it now. It's ready for pre-purchase at appleheadteam.com. What a great name. Appleheadteam.com. So I, got, I had so many requests from people in South America. Uh, you know, I can kind of show you, but you need to show Applehead Team there. Sí. But I had so many wonderful people writing me and asking me if I would um, get it printed in Spanish for all of Michael's fans in Mexico City, in Latin America, South America, and so I'm just so excited that Laura put this together and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's just so special to me. Good for you. So that's well the next deserved. thing I wanted to tell you. All right. Now, 
I have an apology from Rory Kaplan, who's a dear friend, and he was the programmer for the Victory Tour. I think he was the musical director for the Victory Tour. And he was the programmer and co-musical director with Greg Fillengames on the Bad Tour, which I did. And I ran into him recently with Ron, and maybe some of you saw it, at the um, Analogger opening night. And it was lovely to get back with him and share a lot of stories. And he really, really wanted to come today. What happened was, Two days ago, he was with a group of people and a couple of them got COVID. So he's isolating himself right now, so he can't be here, but he wanted to send his love to everybody. And of course he sends his greetings, his birthday greetings to Michael. And uh, yeah, so that's just another wonderful thing that's he said happened that today. He, he said he would give me a rain check. So he's oh. a fascinating guy. The two years together, we, could have, we wouldn't have had enough time today anyway. We, yeah, yeah, he's such a sweetheart and such a genius, just a genius musician. So that was really, um, that was a wonderful evening, and he's so sorry and apologizes that he can't be here today, but he sends his love, and uh, so I'm sharing that with you. Let me think, what else do I want to do? Okay, this is for, so I need, let me see, can I get the participation of everybody in the room for a minute? Can everybody stand up? Can everybody stand up? Okay, this is a little special moment because, um, my mentor, Michael Peters, who choreographed Beat It and Thriller, passed away on Michael's birthday uh, many years ago, almost 20 years ago, but it was on Michael's birthday and I thought that was so amazing. So I just thought, not only in honor of Michael Jackson, but I would like to take a minute and just all of us close our eyes and give thanks for Michael Peters and what he gave to all of us through his incredible choreography and how he really set the stage for Michael Jackson being able to just zoom into that stratosphere, you know, with the first short film, video, um, Beat It, and the second short film, Thriller. And the most amazing thing is, you know, more people have danced Thriller than any other dance in the history of the world. And this was because of Michael Peters. So I would like us all to just close our eyes for a minute and just think, we hope he's in peace. We hope everything is a beautiful place for him. And um, let's just do that and wish him good, good thoughts, okay? Here we go. So we all hope that both of those Michaels are dancing together somewhere, you know, Woo! making some new steps that we're all going to learn someday, you know. So anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for, and thank you for doing that. And I have one more thing I want to do, please. Let's turn the camera around this way. So one of the great Michael Jackson fans internationally is a woman named Bridget Fisserer. She lives in Vienna, and I met her when I was there. She was actually the first Michael Jackson from the Michael Jackson community, the first person that I ever met. And she's a sweetheart, and today is her birthday. So, I want us all to sing to Brigitte. Uh, Renee, would you come up here please and shoot us singing this so we can send it to her as well. I think she's watching, but we're all gonna sing happy birthday to her, and her name is Brigitte, okay? Here we go, ready? Come up here. Ready, and. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brigitte. Happy birthday to you. Great. We wish you could be with us, Brigitte. We wish you could be with us, but we're all here in the name of Michael, and we're all here to wish him a happy birthday, and we're wishing you a happy birthday, too. Okay? Thanks, everybody. And then I had one more fun thing that I wanted to do. And that is, in honor of 40 years of Thriller, I have a surprise. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> These are the real ones. Wow. <laughs> oh my God, it's fabulous. Okay. 40 years ago. 40 years. 
Anyway, I just had to share. I just had to share. So you have your teeth, and you have the same shirt you wore. I have my shirt from Beat It, and I have my teeth from Thriller. And yes, as I say in my book, I was a bad, bad zombie, because we were supposed to give those teeth back. That's and what I, I decided, heard. no, I'm going to keep mine. The statute of limitations, I believe, has expired. <laughs> so you are safe. <laughs> and they were all made for us individually. All oh, made for wow. us individually. So that was uh, Rick anyway, Baker? That was Rick Baker. The great Rick yeah. Baker, wow. And I still have them 40 years later. That's such a treasure. My teeth. <laughs> anyway. Wait, as long as we're reminiscing, be before you start. Elizabeth. Yes. Here's my favorite. I want two of my favorite people to meet each other. Here's this little girl. She's oh, our I know. We just have a picture together. Come, Come on, on over, over here. here. Come on over. Uh, I'm going to cry. Look at this so beauty. here we go. Look at this beauty. This is Aubrey, everyone. And what's your favorite video and song? Beat it. Beat it. And you know who this man is? Did he tell you? Mm -hmm. He's the, the man. The Actually, maybe Big Al could put it up. Hey, Big Al, can you pull up Beat It quick? Where is Big Al? It was Michael Peters and me. We were the two gang leaders. In can you pull up Beat It real quick? Is it on your playlist? Um... So how come you like Beat It Probably, the best? Probably. Because I like the jacket. Oh, because you like the jacket? Oh. oh, that's why she likes Beat It the best. <laughs> well, you got a good good sense of style, I have to say. This is all. you got good taste. <laughs> What's your second favorite? Um, Smooth Criminal. Thriller, Smooth <laughs> Criminal, The Way You Make Me Feel. I like that one. Which one? Real thriller? Yeah, you like that? Did you ever do that dance? No? I hope you learn it. I bet you'd be really good. Skipping like a journalist in New York City, oh. waiting for her big word. I don't know what they're showing back there. Skip ads. There we go. Okay, <laughs> now, Aubrey, look. Turn around for a second. Can you see? What? I know. We don't want to get blocked, but if we have to get blocked, these two people, it's worth it. <laughs> oh, they'll block us because we're um, Yeah, Big Al, maybe kill them. Yeah, maybe lower the music. Okay, now Aubrey. What? Yeah, yeah, keep the music low. I was young then. No, he still looks the same. Watch. There, there he is. There he is, yeah. Aubrey. <laughs> <laughs> he still has the shirt. Wow. Fast forward to the, uh, the the warehouse. He still has the shirt. Absolutely. I do. Is Michael Jackson your favorite singer? Yeah. Um, okay, right there. Right there. Let me hear those doors. Ah, oh, ah, oh, I love that. I love <laughs> now, Arby, look for the guy in the black jacket. And I have a yellow and black shirt. <laughs> the great Michael Peters, who we just spoke about. Uh -huh. And there he is. Woo! That's him, Arby. <laughs> and he's going to dance with Michael. Watch. <laughs> Do you know how to do that dance? No. How come? Yeah! I bet you're a good dancer. Yeah. You could learn that easy. Is that what we're fighting in the night fighting? Here comes Michael. In your, in your jacket? He's wearing your jacket, Aubrey. <laughs> Where do you get your jacket from? There he is. <laughs> what? All right, Big Al, we don't want to push it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Big Al. Thanks. Wow. So that was fun, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs>
And they got a picture together. So yeah, um, thank you. And they're both wearing their red. So you that's a, a beautiful picture. By thank, the you, Aubrey. Aubrey. thank you, Aubrey. Yay! Thank you. Oh, that was cool. <laughs> So that's kind of that was all, all the information and new news that I have for well, today. Well, since we're on beat, it, I, tell the story how you actually uh, what you wore that day, what oh, you wore at the rehearsal. I love that's a great story. Um, it's a fun story. Um, you want, no, I think you. Should. Everybody, uh, you know, I knew it was about gangs, and uh, and so I went. In, I had to audition, and I went into the audition at Debbie Reynolds Dance Studio, which sadly no longer exists. And I looked around, and all the other guys had on skin-tight tank tops, bright colors, and bright colored dance pants, and leg warmers. And I had been an actor, so I came in kind of dressed like what I wore in the video. I actually had on that. Well, I don't know if people are listening out there, are they? Oh, of course okay. they're listening. You're Vincent right. Patterson. Well, they this. better Sorry. be. I'll start a little bit from the beginning again. Sorry for you guys watching, but this is a story of how I did beat it, how I got beat it. So I um, came in and all the other male dancers were dressed in neon colored dance clothes and leg warmers. And I had been an actor and so I thought, oh, I'm gonna go in as a character. So I went in, I had grow my, grew my beard a couple days and I wore an earring and greased my hair a little bit and wore pretty much the same clothes that I wear in, in the short film. And I noticed that Michael Jackson kept looking at me and saying to Michael Peters, who's that guy over there? Who's that guy over there? And um, so I, I did the combination and I danced really well. I have to pat myself on the back for that. But, um, but they didn't tell us that day. So I didn't know what was going to happen. And later that night, Michael Peters called me and said, hey, Vince, come on over to the house. I have something to tell you. And I said, did I get it? Did I get it? And he said, well, I'll tell you when you get here, like that. And I thought, oh no, I didn't get it. So I went in and I walked in and Michael Peters had this long, sad face on him. And he said, well, Vincent, I'm sorry to tell you, but you got the role of the gang leader and I got the role of the other gang leader. So that was how I got it. And it was so, so exciting. So thanks for asking, Ron. <laughs> and from there, I mean, we don't. We only have five hours, so we can't even. No. We can't even do the '80s with you. But but from there we go to Thriller. Yeah, from there we did Thriller, and I I didn't have to audition for Thriller. I assisted Michael Peters on both of those projects as an assistant choreographer, and um, and that was great. And that was really for me. You know, I was with Michael for 17 years, 18 years, and it was so beautiful to see this young kid, shy kid who rarely said a word coming through Debbie Reynolds with just Bill Bray, nobody else around, nobody stopped him in the hallways. He just came through the studio, came into the room, rehearsed without saying a word, and um, this was for Beat It, and just was so kind and sweet and adorable. Worked with us, uh, and Francis Morgan, who also was a dancer who was assisted on the project as well. And um, he, he was just so quiet and shy. Then when Thriller happened, he came into the room and he was a lot more exciting now and he was a lot more excited and he opened his mouth for the first time really rather than just saying thank you, thank you and he said, oh I have some ideas and before he saw the choreography he said to Michael Peters, I just want to be sure that the, that the zombies are scary, I want them really scary. <laughs> so we showed him the choreography and he said, yeah that's what I want, that's what I want, that's what I want. So that was the first day he learned it. And the second day he came in and he made Michael Peters and I put on, uh, uh, he had monster makeup on and he brought some monster masks and he had, uh, they were half masks and he had Michael Peters and I and him stand in front of the mirror for about 15 minutes and make scary monster faces. I mean, you know, he, he never grew up. He was always like 12 years old and, um, yeah, it was so much fun, so much fun. Gone too soon, that's all I can say, gone too soon. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap that up and just say happy birthday, Michael. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Vincent. Okay. Does uh, uh, Renee wanna say hey, something? Hey, Renee, you wanna say something about Analogger? Come on up, Renee. Some of you saw um, Ron was at 
uh, Renee works for a company called Analogger, and they're a memorabilia home, and uh, both of incredible equipment and, and movie memorabilia. And Ron came the other night with Rory, and this is Renee, if you don't know, but, um, and tell them a little bit about Analogger and what you guys have there. Well, Analogger, it's a mix of uh, memorabilia and studio gear that we collect through a very successful and le legendary music producers, engineer, and collectors all around the world. And what we do is we dig in and we find the story behind the items. And uh, example, we did something with like the beaded shirt that Vincent has, or an Eric Clapton guitar, or um, um, Eddie Van Halen Eddie guitars. Eddie Van Halen guitars or many different items like that that we go in and we tell the story and basically our goal of course these items are uh, are for sale but we want to gather as much history as possible and have the opportunity of people to come over and go in our showroom and see these uh, artifacts for themselves because they are very rare and they are part of music history Tell them the address. Uh, our address is basically corner uh, Glendale. Uh, it's in Glendale. It's corner uh, Los Feliz Boulevard and South Central. On the, it's a white building in front of the Pizza Hut there, and it's written analog R, analog R on, the, on the wall. So it's very easy to and see. And the people have to call to make an appointment, right? It's not uh, you just show up and walk yes. in. Yes. I mean, I'm going to give you yeah, the phone number. Absolutely. By heart. Hold on. But they have so much fun stuff there. Amazing, amazing stuff. Oh my gosh. Stuff. They, they, they have, for instance, the clothes that the Beatles wore on the Ed Sullivan show. Yeah. I mean, amazing stuff. They have John Lennon's bathrobe. They have the desk John Lennon used as a kid that his aunt saved. Um, they have Eddie Van Halen guitars. They have, oh my gosh, they have so much incredible stuff. It's a museum. It's like it's, an, yeah, museum. It's a museum. And you can go online and bid at analogr.com, A-N-A-L-O-G-R.com, and you can bid on stuff that you would like to have. And you can come and visit us if you call 323-600-5715, 323-600-5715, Thomas Scriven. He's my best friend, and he's the guy who owns the business. And All I'm the, the photographer. And uh, make an appointment with us, and uh, come and visit us and see what we have. All the all the items are on our video. What what day was the grand opening? I, I've been here so long, Tuesday. I forget. Was it last Tuesday? It was la a week ago. Uh, yeah. This it. past Tuesday. Two, two so, Tuesdays uh, ago. Yeah, already. All right. I don't know that. It, yeah. It went fast. So yeah, we were on for about an hour and a half. You can see the interview with Vincent and Rory, Rory Kaplan. And yeah. you were telling me the day before Rory was there in the back uh, playing. On the uh, keyboards? Yeah, he came to oh, the to try some keyboard and stuff and do a little setup. And, you know, I was doing photography at the back and suddenly I, I started hearing Man in the Mirror. Oh my God. It's like, oh my God, I got chills all over. <laughs> so we went there and he was playing Man in the Mirror. He was playing, uh, and he started to play around the thriller. And it's like, oh my God, it's been such a long time. So he was doing it. And it was <laughs> wow. Oh my God. I see that coming from uh, Michael, the 15th? Okay. Michael's musical director. Yeah. Rory Kaplan. What a legend. Yeah. Amazing. Was one, of, one of the things we were talking about, Rory, is next, uh, next year in January will mark 35 years since the end of the Bad Tour. Oh my God. We were saying, wouldn't it be great <laughs> if we got the remaining members and oh, the dancers yeah. and if, if there was only a choreographer Renee you think we could find <laughs> you think we could find some and put it together for like a charitable event something that and would be incredible would be wouldn't it so maybe the Jackson cool. brothers wow. uh, you know we're just kind of throwing out stuff I don't want to get everybody but but uh, so that's the plan so that's well the, you know I believe you have to say things out loud that you desire yes, put it out so there. that you put it into the Thank universe and, and then it comes back the energy gets picked up I mean who would say no that's how that. things happen you know you so. know Thank you for giving me that opportunity to talk about Analog R. Uh, I'm very excited about it, but today it's about Michael Jackson, Michael's birthday. And thank you, Michael, for. And we're going to sing Happy here. Birthday to Michael. And, oh, and okay. you guys are looking at the hat. This is the happiest couple in California. <laughs> I've been here many times. I'm telling you, right here, you're looking at it. Go ahead, you guys. We're going to sing. They have to go soon. So okay, this... everybody needs to sing with us. Happy you're going to sing Happy Michael. Birthday to Michael with us, please. You want to go by the cake? Well, no, we'll just do it yeah, here. Yeah. Here we go. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. See everybody. Happy birthday, dear Michael. Happy birthday to you. Thank you guys, folks. Thank you so, so much. we're heading for uh, vacations coming up. Uh, yeah, we're, we're out of here. We're, we're going to Big Sur and camp out for Beautiful. several days. So we're very excited. Once and again, the book, everybody, Icons and Instincts, coming if soon. If you don't have it, just, you guys, you don't know what you're missing. Oh, it's, it's a great book, yeah. Book. So I forgot what day um, we were at the book soup. It's, yeah, last was September. Was it a year ago? Yeah. Last September. So yeah. go back to September, you guys. There was a great uh, uh, Vincent Red. A couple of pages from it, and yeah. everybody was there. So yeah. it was great. These these two guys are always the best. They're always there for me, and uh, I love you guys both. Thank, thank you, Ron. All right, thank, thank you. you guys both. Enjoy your vacation. Everybody enjoy your time here and, and celebrating Michael and his birthday. All right. Do we know if is Rory here? Not Rory. Um, Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Give me that for a second. Thank you for everything. Go ask uh, Roberta. Okay, you guys. So, is Matt here? John? I'm so happy. Yeah, they they just decided to do it. I'm not even. No? Okay, all right. All right, um, let's play. Well, let's the only play. Um, that, I don't know if I've ever been here. That it will be in oh, Spanish. Hold it would on. have to be online. And it would have hold to on. be from these people right here. Okay. Hang on a second, you guys. Team.com. Oh. Okay, Tell them to come up, yeah. Okay. Yep, and this is the name. Yeah. Iconos y Instintos, sí. Vincent, for one second. Yes. You've never met. This is Big Al Scanlon well, we from the Neverland Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that? We have a connection, at least we've been around my Absolutely. I've the ranch for 15 years. Oh, I know. There's two of my favorite people in the world, for <laughs> sure. Now, we're going to bring up... Okay. Thank I'll you. I'll put on book yeah. in, in Spanish, okay? Oh, good. <laughs> Thank All you. right. Ron, can I have one of these? Of course. Thanks. Take one. One for Renee. Take a, yeah, take a couple. Take a couple for your friends. And for my friend, Give them out. Thank, Thank you, you again, everybody. the great Thank Vincent you. Patterson. Thank you. Happy birthday, Michael. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you. Thank Next, wait, let me just confirm that he's here. <laughs> Is Betsy finding him? How you doing, Good. All right, yeah. we're waiting on our next guest, Mr. Matt Forger. I think he's in the house somewhere. Okay, Big Al, you can play that quick. So, this here is our next guest as soon as he gets here. Sunday of his life, what he did was he would do a juice fast, and if he was at home, he would be in the room above the garage. And he would dance, and he would dance, and he would dance the whole entire time. He would keep himself in his body. Now, it is my belief that uh, dancers and choreographers are not normal, mortal individuals. I meant to ask Vincent if he heard relate that. to music differently. I mean, they, they feel things they cannot prevent their body from moving. And Michael was one of those people. The way he Oh, okay, it's almost over. Was so basically, when, if you start when you're six years old and you dedicate uh, your exactly. life to being the best that you could be. To your point, that's what he was as an artist. He was a singer, songwriter, dancer, and that, and he, he didn't separate those things even when he was in a recording studio. Okay, cut. Making his way right on cue, Mr. Matt Forger. <laughs> Go ahead, get set up. I, I do this so I have a, I can remember what I said. I think they want you to use the mic, Big Al. Yeah, the people on there couldn't hardly hear anything Vincent all was right. saying, so okay. if, you if you don't mind. Not at all, not at all. So you just missed okay, Vincent, did you get to see Vincent on the way out? I, I saw him in, in passing. Oh, okay, good. Because, uh, one, two, are we, are we on? Big Al, he's on? Yep. Okay. I'm on? Okay. Um, 
Rory Kaplan was supposed to be here with us today, okay. which was going to be a. Uh, we would have obviously gone through the bad album plus the tour. So right. you were mostly part of the the bad album in the studio for the most part. Well, what I did when I worked with Michael was I worked out with him in the studio, and I didn't do the live component. It was generally structured in such a way that the uh, the people he had on his his live uh, shows and on his tours was a different set of people than he worked with in the studio, with the exception of usually one person, and that person would most frequently be the music director for the tour. You work with John uh, Barnes a lot, right? I work extensively with John Barnes. Barnes. And, uh, a, lot, a lot of projects with John. And you're part of the, quote, the, uh, the team. The team. The A-team. I was part of Quincy, Tell- Quincy's A-team, and I was... Part of Michael's A team. And, and Quincy's A team, for those that don't know, were the legendary. Well, it was the studio group in the, in the studio when we did Thriller. I mean, it was the uh, the studio uh, team and the uh, musicians who uh, were. were that... Bruce Wadeen, Rod Temperton. Oh, oh, yes. Yep. Bruce, Bruce Wadeen, Rod Temperton, uh, Quincy. myself, Quincy. Quincy. That was. And then Quincy extended that to the musicians like uh, Greg Philgaines, uh John Robinson, uh, uh, Louis Johnson. Sure. Uh, there, were, there, were, there was a group of people. You, um, you worked on the Donna Summer album, right, before the Thriller? Correct. Uh, I worked with the, the team. The team. Uh, and we did the Donna Summer album titled Donna Summer immediately before uh, we did Michael Jackson's Thriller. In fact, what we uh, did was we took a week off in the middle of the Donna Summer album because that was the only time that uh, Michael and Paul McCartney could uh, coordinate their schedules and be in town uh, to record uh, The Girl Is Mine. Wow. And we recorded and we tracked that song on April 14th, 1982. And Quincy said, we're going to work with Michael, you're going to love him. What what went through your mind when he like what was the first thing you thought? Well, I had known of Michael right. because no one growing up didn't know of Michael from the Jackson Five because they their music was everywhere. So while I didn't uh, know Michael, uh, that was the first that was my meeting him for the first time, which was he, there wasn't a whole lot of interaction that day because he was focused on the track, he was focused on The Girl Is Mine and the musicians. Uh, so he was focusing on that and I was focusing on doing what I did because I, am Thriller, of course, I'm credited as being the technical engineer, so I was in charge of the technology. And uh, he noticed me across the room, but we didn't have a chance to actually chat and talk that day. You were, you were part of uh, Thriller, Bad, Dangerous history and blood on the dance floor. Yes, and Captain Eo. Captain Eo in the middle. I, I kind of want to talk to you about that. But okay. Captain Eo doesn't get a lot of. Uh, and you were instrumental in bringing it to uh, uh, the Disney World, correct? Uh, correct. Wow. Uh, Captain Eo was exhibited in four places uh, Disneyland in Anaheim, Disney World at Epcot in Orlando. Uh, Euro Disney outside Paris, and then uh, Tokyo Disneyland. I was there opening night in Florida. I stood on line. They handed out the pink glasses. When you walked in, you had to walk around back. You had to wait on another hour and a half line, which we gladly did. We never saw the 3D before. You're reaching out where you could touch the like like it was it was an unbelievable experience. You know, with the glasses on, yeah. we didn't we didn't know what to expect. Not to mention the music was you know phenomenal. Uh, you know, another part. I mean, the whole you know the the, the uh, well, it was. I mean, and that was a great uh, collaborative uh, uh, effort because uh, uh, the team of people that uh, contributed on uh, Captain Neo. I mean, you had uh, Disney, the Disney Imagineering, um, Francis Ford Coppola directing, decent George Lucas okay. producing, all right, and Michael Jackson mm. and his music. So, what an enormous uh, and it, talent it had never pool. been it had never been seen before, right? So, what, what were the expectations? What what, what is I mean, we knew it was going to be good, but... Well, I don't know what anyone's expectations were. I just knew that I was working really darn hard, uh, putting in long hours, making it the very best it could be, because that's what you did when you worked with Michael Jackson. Uh, You know, everything was up to the Michael Jackson standard of being the very best. 
and uh, I didn't realize quite how big it was until I went to the premiere in Anaheim, and the park was just, it was jammed, it was packed, and, and there were all kinds of uh, people there, and once again, it was that same situation, there was a long line to get in to see it, uh, and uh, seeing it in the theater was a real experience, and, and seeing the reaction that people had to it. This is my friend uh, Betsy here. She's on YouTube. We, Hi, we, of course, we love the Bad Tour. Yes. But we love the Victory Tour. The Victory Tour. And yes. talk a little about the Creton people, which yeah. a lot of people don't uh, may not know the stories, who they were, and what uh, happened. Uh, I worked uh, with uh, Bruce Wedeen and Michael on the songs that Michael did and contributed to the Victory album, uh, and. Uh, of course, State of Shock, yeah, Be Not Always, and then uh, they started talking about they were going to put together uh, a tour, uh, the brothers, and uh, were getting the whole band back together. They were going on tour for the Victory Tour, and the musical director, uh, Jay Winding, uh, said, oh, I'd like to work with you uh, in finishing up what we're going to have as the opening of the Victory Tour. And of course I agreed, I said sure, whatever I can do. And he said, okay, well we've got a few things we've got to record and then we're going to have to mix it. So what we did was we worked in the studio on finishing uh, the recording and the recording included the, the narration of the story. Uh, the story being about the, the uh, kind of in a, in a kind of long ago in a distant uh, right. galaxy far away. Uh, they were, it was a, uh, a setting of a world, and there was a world that was dominated by uh, what were the Cretans. The Cretan people. The Cretans were the big overlords. And um, the story, uh, which was narrated, was one of uh, the people who were dominated, uh, fighting back against the, uh, the overlords. So uh, they had uh, uh, the action on stage was acting out the, uh, the narration for what the story was. And uh, I found out later that the person who was acting as the Cretan was actually uh, Michael's uh, Kind of, kind of as a right-hand person, uh, Nelson Hayes. <laughs> That's who, who the the bad guy was, as the Cretan. And a, they had a battle with lightsabers, and uh, this was all done to the to the music and the narration. And uh, it was really exciting when I got to uh, see the uh, actually see it in person at uh, Dodger Stadium. The last four shows. I mean, that was the last stop. I remember it, it going was. for all four shows. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, I wasn't... My His family wasn't came sure up on stage. To, and to where it was. But um, I had tickets, and I was in the audience, and I sat between Dick Clark and Bruce Woody. Wow. Decent? Uh, that, that, was, that, was a, that was a thrill, too, because I was in the... I guess I was in the VIP section. And Randy, Randy was the one that uh, pulled out the sword, right, at the end? He was, he was the one who was the, uh, yeah, he was the, uh, the hero. And isn't there, isn't there a Miko Brando connection in there that people may not know? There may be. I I'm thought not, he was I'm one not of really the, sure. Okay. I I, I he, he may have been yeah. involved in that in some way because, like I said, uh, I didn't work in the uh, tour right, or, right. or the live. Uh, so what happened kind of behind the scenes I wasn't cognizant of to any great degree uh, I was uh, doing the music and that was my specialty that's that's what I did so that was my focus you worked mostly well with which album was did you do the most work on uh, the most work was probably on bad Not bad and if you saw uh, Spike Lee's bad 25 uh, he goes a little bit into um, what we did, and uh, there's uh, some video in there of uh, us in the Havenhurst studio. Uh, I actually worked over a year uh, with Michael as he was developing 
the uh, writing the songs, developing the style of the music, the sound of the music. And uh, I worked with him for over a year before Quincy and Bruce came on board on the bad project. And then they, of course, were working at Westlake Studios. So Michael had two sets of, uh, it's two, two complete different studio operations going. Which was, which is a lot of fun because uh, I, I got to work with Michael and uh, basically do the recordings of the songs uh, and uh, then the, of the songs that I did with Michael then when it went to uh, Quincy and Bruce and the other team that was at Westlake, then they had to copy what we had originally done. They re-recorded it with Quincy producing and uh, I got to have all the fun though, because I got to I got to do the exploration and the discovery and the development of, of Michael and the, his sound and what he was creating. It sounds like it was it was fun going to work every day for you. <laughs> it it always was. I mean, this is what I I moved to Los Angeles from upstate New York uh, to pursue a career working in recording studios because I had mixed live sound. And uh, I always wanted to uh, move to Los Angeles, work in recording studios, and understand what went into making hit records and, and what made the songs and the recordings special. Because growing up, it was one of those things where you'd be, you'd be a young person, and of course everyone listened to the radio at that time. And, uh, you know, there'd be several songs, and then there'd be one song that would come on that would really excite me, really say, well, this is a great song. Well, my qu the question in my mind was, what makes that song different than all those other songs? Those other songs are good, but this one is great. And that was my quest, was to be able to work in the studio and uh, find out uh, what the magic was and, and why great songs were great. And you, you worked at uh, Westlake Studio, right? That was one of your first uh, yes. trainee, uh, tech trainee kind of? What I did was I moved to uh, Los Angeles and I got a job as a technician trainee for uh, Westlake Studios, which was perfect for me because what I wanted to do was I wanted to learn the whole recording studio side of things and I wanted to know the behind the scenes, the what went on in terms of um, the studio design and the, 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 the equipment. I've been using, uh, you know, sound equipment for a long time, mixing live, but it's a different application when you're in a uh, recording studio. Even, even if the equipment is the same equipment, it's a different uh, procedural thing. Uh, recording and mixing. And it's the technique and the equipment is applied in a different fashion. So I wanted to understand it as best I could. One, one of the Facebook viewers says, I don't know if you know, how did All In Your Name come about? I don't know if that was you. All In Your Name? One of his songs. I'm uh, not familiar with that title. Yeah. Talk about one Today we're doing People of the World, which okay. was the song that Michael, the earthquake for uh, the Japanese um, oh, earthquake. He, it was a demo for him. He never finished it. It's a beautiful song, so it's going to be our theme, all the flowers and people of the world. One of the other songs, Scared of the Moon, doesn't get a lot of, well, it's not really released, right? Technically, it's a, it's well, a demo, it, but it's out there, and people have heard it, and everyone loves it, and it's like, how, how close was it to being complete? Do we do we? Well, that was one of the things that uh, would happen to me. I'd get a phone call, and uh, you know, Michael would want to come into the studio and record a song. And he was always writing songs, so I'd get these calls to show up at the studio, not even knowing what the nature of the song would be that we'd be addressing. And uh, one day uh, I showed up, and uh, there was a, uh, a accompanist there, and uh, we recorded uh, Scared of the Moon. It was uh, uh, just a piano and, and Michael's vocal. And uh, we recorded it, and uh, Michael said, oh, I'm going to uh, put some strings on this. There's going to be some strings added to it later. Uh, and I, I want to take the tape with me. So um, I said, oh, fine. Uh, Wonderful. We made a mix of it, and I gave Michael a cassette of the mix, which is what uh, everyone listened to at that point in time. 
and uh, then he took the multi-track tape with him. And then uh, a few weeks later, I got a call from a recording studio, and they said, well, we're here in the studio, we've got the orchestra, and uh, Michael has a cassette, but we want to know where the multi-track tape is so that we can do the actual real recording of the strings uh, to the multi-track. And I said, well, I'm sorry, but Michael took the multi-track tape with him. Uh, and he goes, well, all we have is a cassette. And I said, well, then I'd say bounce the cassette to the multi-track and record against that because I don't, I don't have the tape, I don't have access to it, I have no idea how to locate it. And uh, that's what they did. And uh, that is what became the uh, Scared of the Moon version that had the strings on it. I get a I get an ET vibe kind of when I listen to it, like like ET storybook kind of. Well, Michael was working on developing a uh, a larger project uh, relating kind of as a as a child's uh, storyline, and the actual song "Scared of the Moon." At the time, uh, he was dating Brooke Shields, and Michael told me the story of the song. And that was Brooke Shields' younger sister was frightened when wow. she would see the full moon in the sky. Oh my God. And so when Michael heard the story from Brooke Shields, uh, he, that triggered in him the idea for the song. So the song was really written about uh, Brooke Shields' younger sister. Wow. It, it, it is, a, is a kind of a a child fantasy world of, for whatever reason, I, I have no reason why she was frightened of the moon, but that's the way the story was told to me. And I know Michael said, you know, he intended to, at some point, he wanted to be able to expand on that, not just being one song, but uh, being a more uh, extensive uh, collection of, of songs and stories. Unfortunately, uh, that didn't ever uh, come to be, but it was a lot of fun to do. And it was kind of uh, an interesting thing is when uh, I met Spike Lee and we had the uh, first uh, pre-production meeting and I was meeting uh, Spike, uh, we were discussing different songs and there were a lot of songs that we had worked on that hadn't been released and Spike said that that's really good and he turned to me and he said by the way did did you record Scared of the Moon? I said yeah I did and he jumped up out of his chair and you know he was he, not that far away from me but he did a couple of steps to me and gave me a giant hug and I was just I, I was kind of shocked and surprised he said that is my favorite song by Michael and I said that really that really makes me feel good because it's it holds yeah. a special place in my heart as well it's it's so to me it's so representative of Michael it, it, there's that there's that quality of Michael reflecting on the innocence of childhood and uh, the idea that someone would be scared of the moon is kind of it's 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 something that I don't think many children think of. They don't they don't see that as something to be frightened of. But in that child's mind, that's what was happening. Right. This might be a long answer, but the process of what what songs go on what album, like like who. I mean, Michael has final say. Quincy, Bruce. Well, it depends. You? Uh, it depends on who's the, who's like offici thriller. officially the producer of the album. And generally speaking, it's a uh, if it's uh, if it's uh, like a Thriller and Bad, of course, uh, and Off the Wall. Those were uh, produced by Quincy, and Michael uh, co-produced uh, his songs on, on those uh, albums. So it would be a collaborative uh, kind of a decision. On the uh, albums uh, Dangerous and um, History, 
I know that uh, Michael talked to Bruce a lot about, you know, what, the, what are we looking at in terms of a group of songs. Michael would always record more songs than were required to, to go on an album. And very times, uh, often he was, he was frustrated at the fact that he couldn't fit more songs on an album. But whether you're on vinyl or whether you're on a CD, there is a limited amount of music that can fit on the disc. And so, the, sequence, the sequence of the songs, there has to be kind of a flow to the album? Do they, do well, they... there does, because at this point in time, albums aren't the thing. You right. know, it's streaming, and so everybody kind of builds, yeah. a, builds a playlist. Uh, so you kind of design your own flow for how you want songs to be. But when you're creating a product, what you want is you want something that you can start at the beginning, and it can flow through, and it has kind of a... A, a rhythm and, a, and a, a contour and a life and it's not that you want it to be all the same the ideal thing is that you want it to be a, a roller coaster ride you want the energy to to change and to shift and you want the songs to be able to flow into one another so that when one song is finishing and then the next song comes on and pops up it's like yes that's you, you, you've turned a corner. You've got you've got a different kind of energy, a different kind of feeling coming at you, and it, it engages you. So that's something that uh, there'd always be a, a lot of discussion about, and lots of times there would be uh, the process that we would mock up what was going to be the sequence, and then we would build that, and then uh, Michael would get a tape of that, and he would be able to hear how the songs flowed, and uh, he would take that home and listen to it, and then if there were changes to be made. If um, I'm not mistaken, one, at least on the cassette, Want to Be Starting Something was the first on, I believe, side A, and then on side B, I think it went Beat It, Billie Jean, Human Nature, I PYT, so. Lady of My... I mean, not that I listened to the album a lot, but Lady of My Life at, at the end. Yeah, that was the end, yes. Well, do you know what songs got... Like, what were the next two that would have been on that, that, that? Well, what there was, there was a process that we knew how many songs were going to be on the Thriller album. Uh, and when we started, there was a group of songs. Uh, but as the work on the album progressed, um, there were new songs coming onto the scene. Uh, when we started, uh, uh, Michael brought Start and Something and uh, Billie Jean. And uh, there were a couple other songs. Rod had written a song called Starlight, which later became Thriller. And there were some other songs uh, from some other writers. And as the music, as we worked on the recording, and we worked on the production, uh, it was a little while into the actual work on the album that Michael actually brought in the song Beat It. That wasn't there at the very start. That was probably in the middle. And then we started to see, uh, especially Quincy, who was very sensitive uh, to, uh, he was a, he, he has produced so many successful sure, sure, albums. Sure. Uh, he recognized uh, where things were going, as did Rod. And they said, you know, this, the, the character, the nature of the Thriller album is really going to an edgier, uh, you know, not, not, not harder, but a little more intense kind of energy. And that is when uh, the, the focus of the songs became really critical. Um, we had, of course, The Girl Is Mine, which was a very light pop type of song and there were several other songs we were working on that kind of had a light pop character but kind of off the wall like kind of carry over from very, the... very very much in, in uh, keeping with the, the nature of those songs and um, then everyone started to see how things were morphing and it was like the album had a life of its own it, it, in these songs uh, all of a sudden the uh, these songs started coming together in such a way. Um, one of the ones uh, that uh, Steve Picaro tells 
the story of, and Quincy tells the story, of how uh, human nature, human nature was a complete accident uh, because um, the two guys who were master keyboard people, uh, David Page and Steve Piccaro, Steve Piccaro is an amazing uh, synth programmer and a technology whiz, and David Page is, is a, a superb performer, so they would always work together as a team. And they would we they worked quite extensively with Quincy on, on several albums. So David Page had written some songs uh, because Quincy said, you know, if you guys come up with anything, I'm really curious to hear uh, what kind of songs you come up with. And David, being the writer, he had written several songs. And when it came time for him to put them on a cassette to give to Quincy, uh, he didn't have a new cassette, and he grabbed this uh, old cassette that was laying around. And uh, it, was a saw, it was a cassette that Steve had been uh, using. And so uh, on side B, uh, David Page put his songs that he was submitting to Quincy. And uh, when uh, Quincy was in, at home, and he had it in his cassette machine. Uh, he was listening to David Page's songs as he was working on uh, making some notes. And he wasn't really focusing on it. And uh, back in the day, if people know cassettes and they're familiar with them, they had cassette machines that instead of having to take the cassette out of the machine and turn it over and then put it back on, they had cassettes that would auto-reverse and they would automatically play the other side. So what happened was Quincy wasn't even paying attention to the machine. He left it running because he, he was working on some other things. And it switched sides and on came this song that caught Quincy's attention. And he said, wow, this is good. This is, this is, I, I, this is great. I, I love this song. So he called David Page and he said, David, I love that song, that why, why, why song. <laughs> and David Page is completely caught off guard. He doesn't know what Quincy's talking about. And it takes them a little while to figure out <laughs> that what Quincy loved so much was a demo of a song that Steve Picaro would read. Wow. Now, Steve, when Steve Picaro tells the story about the song, uh, he had a young daughter, and his young daughter was in school. And uh, there was a boy that his daughter uh, liked, but it seems that the boy was not treating her well and he would hit her and, and annoy her. And she said, you know, I like this, this boy, but he, he annoys me. He, he, it's, it's not like he likes me, it's like he doesn't like me. And so Steve, being the father that he was, explaining to his daughter, well, this is how sometimes how, you know, people, when people don't know how to express something, they, they kind of act in a different way. He goes, it's just, it's just human nature. It's just the way people act. Now, to me, what my understanding of the dynamic that was occurring was the fact that Quincy was triggering off of this completely sincere, honest, emotional quality that Steve was expressing in this song, and the song being about the situation with his daughter, and what dad doesn't have a close relationship with their 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 daughter, so it was it was from from Steve's heart. This this wasn't something that he was writing, thinking, oh, I got to write a hit song. He wasn't even the guy that Quincy said, write some songs for me. He, Quincy had that conversation with David. So it was when Quincy heard this, I think it's that, that honesty and that sincerity and that feeling because everybody knows, and I think everybody here will agree, that when you hear human nature, I mean, the emotion in that song comes right across. And, and, uh, from there, they brought in um, um, Bettis, uh, John Bettis, uh, to help uh, complete the lyrics. And um, then David Page and Steve Piccaro came in and recorded the song. Rory Kaplan said it was his favorite song to play live on the 
on the tour with the lights on the side would come up and the, and the whole yeah he's... I have heard many people tell me that it's their favorite song on Thriller because when you listen to Thriller it is yet an, one of those songs that is a completely different character it's coming from a completely different place and emotionally when you hear it this is this is where the Thriller album excels is you know you get this range of emotion with this collection of songs and that's where pacing, pacing those songs comes in in how the running order of the songs are. I think Billie Jean was the song before it. So we have to talk a little Billie Jean. Okay. And, um, I mean, it stands out, right? The, uh, it's, yeah. It, 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 it stands out in a big way, yeah. Right. Um, when you first heard it, what was your first? Uh, uh, well, the songs that when Michael brought in, uh, starting something in Billie Jean, I mean, when I heard both of these songs, it was like I was hearing something, and of course this is now hearing Michael's demo. It was like I was hearing something that I honestly could say, you know, I haven't heard a song exactly like this before. Now, this was one of the qualities that immediately hit me, and one of the things uh, when we worked on Billy Jean, uh, I think that was one of the things that Quincy had, had a little bit of uncertainty about. You hear that story? I didn't know if it's uh, true. Well, but... it's it's he he didn't not want it on the album, but he had a little bit of uncertainty. He said, you know, this song is about a subject that there has never been a song with this for the subject matter. This is like you're going to a new place here. And um, at that time, there was a very popular celebrity named Billie Jean. So the combination of that was uh, Quincy saying to Michael, you know, is this, uh, how are you feeling about this song? And Michael was totally like, yeah, this, this song is great. And the more we worked on it in the studio, the stronger it got, the more powerful it became. Maybe just the message to Quincy was thinking, not the actual hearing. Well, hearing that, I mean, because you hear it, it's like, wow. It, it is, but when you, when you hear something in its raw form and you're trying to imagine what are we going to do and to take this to a completed place, uh, Quincy is going to play, as they would say, the devil's advocate and think, well, is that uh, is that going to work? Is this going to be, you know, great? And once, once we got the song well underway in the studio, there was no question. Quincy was totally on board. Uh, we, we all agreed. The song was just phenomenal. Uh, phenomenally strong and powerful. And Michael sang all parts, right? He sang, he sang all the backgrounds, yes. Wow. He, sang, he sang everything on that song. And uh, that was a, that's a, an incredible experience because when Michael comes in to sing, he knows exactly what he's going to perform. He knows exactly the character he's going to use, how he's going to deliver it, how he's going to play the ad libs, how he's going to do all the parts. Every hiccup, every tee hee. Every, every single one. He, <laughs> he, in his mind, he works out. In fact, as a recording engineer, when you record background vocals, what you do is you do what's called doubling. Now, when Michael sings his harmony vocals, his harmony vocals are doubled to make them sound fuller and thicker. So what you do is you sing the track the first time, you sing that part, and then you sing it a second time. And when you're listening to it on your stereo or in your headphones, the first time he sings it is gonna, you're probably gonna hear it on your left-hand side. And the second time he sings oh. it, it's gonna be on the right-hand side. Then when he does his next harmony note, he sings that next first one, that's on the left side, the second time he sings that harmony note, it's on the right side. He's doing this intentionally. intentionally. Exactly. And when you have these spread in stereo, and then you, you hear the full thing, you get the richness and the fullness and the power, and it, it's big. The size of it is big. And Michael knows exactly when he walks into the room, what track he's singing, where in the finished mix, every tee hee, every hiccup, every little tiny accent ad lib is going to be in the stereo field because in his mind, 
he knows exactly the way it's going to play out. This is the way Michael's mind works. He understands music at a level that he knows walking into the room after he completes his performance, he knows exactly what it's going to sound like because he has it all planned out ahead of time and practiced. Which leads to his work ethic. Oh, his work ethic is incredible. It's better than any one I've ever worked with. In fact, uh, there's a story about the, uh, uh, the little uh, a voice when he sings the uh, don't think twice, do think twice line of the song. And what it is, is uh, the day that uh, Michael was going to sing background vocals, uh, Michael walks into the stu studio, into the control room, and he's carrying a, a mailing tube. You know, it's that kind of tube that's about three or four inches around, and it's about two and a half, three feet long. It's what, you know, if you order a poster, it's what they send you, you know, the poster and the mailing tube. So he's, he's got this, this cardboard tube in his hand. And Bruce says, what have you got with you today? And Michael goes, oh, this is, this is what I sing that line in the middle of the song with. And Bruce's eyes lit up and said, wow, great idea. He goes, Matt, you gotta go out and you gotta put up a microphone on the side. So my, when Michael sings that line, you know, we got the microphone in the right place. So I had to set that up. But that was Michael understanding that he wanted a differentiation of those two lines so that it was as if there were two different people. And the way it was ex I envisioned it is if you've ever seen cartoons and you see the cartoon and on, on one shoulder you see a little devil and on the other shoulder you see a little angel and the little angel is saying, now be a good boy. And the little devil is going, no, you gotta get into trouble. <laughs> so it, it was kind of like that contrast. And in my mind, I'm, I'm picturing, you know, that's what I'm picturing is happening. Is there's a, there's a, a little voice saying, now you gotta be good. And you know, there's another voice saying, no. <laughs> but that's what he said, mother always told me, uh, do think twice, don't think twice. It's that contrasting of that. And Michael wanted the contrast between uh, those two lines as if it was these two different entities uh, talking to him. What did, what did you learn from him that you carry forward in your own work? Or? I learned so much. Uh, it's, it's, there, there is such a, an enormous... Uh, Amount. Uh, I was once asked that question by uh, a friend who was a studio technician. And I said, well, he said, what did you learn work, working with Bruce and Quincy and Michael and, you know, in the studio? And I said, well, what I learned was I learned all the other stuff. And especially from Michael. Uh, when we were working at Westlake, uh, we had done uh, Captain Neo. And after we had finished the Captain Neo music, the recording of it, uh, we started on songs that were going to be used for bad. And uh, we worked for about a month before Michael's studio at Havenhurst was completed and we were able to work there. So the first day that I walked into the Havenhurst recording studio, and I walked in the door, and you walk in the door, it's on the side of the control room, on the wall, that you face on the opposite side of the room, there is a quote, and the quote is from John Lennon. And the, the quote basically says, when I am writing the great songs, the great music, the music of the spheres, uh, I do not feel that I am responsible for, for this music, but I feel that I am merely a channel through which this music is coming into the world. And I walked into the room and I read that on the wall and I just smiled and I said, this is gonna be fantastic, this is gonna be great. Because although I had never heard that quote from John Lennon, and I was a Beatles fan, so I, I, I loved you know, all the Beatles songwriting, but I totally got what the quote was about. And I understood that that was where Michael was coming from as well. And I just said, 
I know this is going to be fantastic. This is going to be a tremendous experience. Uh, you know, this, continuing this work and working on these songs uh, in, in, as we approach the bad project. And this was the kind of thing that was the behind the scenes thing. Uh, there was a lot of time uh, when you work in the studio where it's between uh, you know doing this or doing that or you're taking a break and um, when you sat in the Havenhurst control room and you looked through the glass into the studio room on the right hand side there was an upright piano and on the opposite wall from that there was another quote written on the wall and this was a quote from Thomas Edison and the quote was, it's a very famous quote of Thomas Edison's, where he says, success is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. And then he goes into a longer uh, discussion of uh, what you do when you approach a project is you run tests, you do evaluations, you gather all the information, you analyze what you do. It's a, it's a very long quote, but uh, Michael, when Michael told me, you know, he was, a, he was a fan of Thomas Edison, I said, well, of course. I mean, I, I grew up reading the biographies of all the guys that were the inventors, like Thomas Edison and Henry Ford and Alexander Graham Bell. And, and this is what Michael did. Michael studied everyone. He, Michael studied everyone that had reached a level of success, not just in music, but in, in art, in science, in, in industry. And uh, we used to talk. We, we had discussions about these people. And the discussion about Thomas Edison was especially interesting because Michael, after we talked about Thomas Edison, uh, I, I told him that uh, on a vacation uh, I was able to visit uh, Thomas Edison's winter home and actually tour his facility, his, his uh, laboratory and, and his facility. And Michael said to me, you know, Matt, the entertainment industry owes a debt of gratitude to Thomas Edison, and it has never been acknowledged. But Thomas Edison deserves a lot more recognition than he's ever received. Because when you think about it, the entire entertainment industry is based on the work of Thomas Edison. And if you think about it, you think about the electric light bulb. Sure. In the early days of black and white movies, before electric lighting, when they would build a, what we call a sound stage for shooting a movie, what they do is they would build it on a platform, and the platform could could rotate. And the sound stage itself didn't have a roof. And as the sun traversed the sky, the turntable, they would move so that the lighting would be consistent on the actors that they were filming. So the, the advent of electricity and electric lighting was a tremendous boom to the movie industry. And then you have the moving picture, which of course Thomas Edison was also instrumental in. And thirdly, you have sound recording, and everybody knows Thomas Edison is the person who invented the phonograph. And the first thing that Thomas Edison recorded on his phonograph, people may not know what it was, but it was Thomas Edison's voice recording, Mary had a little lamb. Her fleece was white as snow. Everywhere that Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. That was the very first sound recording in history. So you combine the electric light, motion picture, and sound recording, and what do you have? You have the entertainment industry. So without Edison moving these, these, these inventions and these, developing these things, there, there wouldn't be an entertainment industry. And Michael was just feeling that Thomas Edison has never gotten his, what was rightly due to him in terms of uh, recognition.
we were never even thinking that, right? Like, no. Like the average person, would, that never crossed my mind ever. Like, no, no, that is something that you wouldn't think <laughs> right. of. But this is the kind of thing that, right. you know, Michael and I would get Study into Study the grace and become greater. He always said that. He did. And one of the things that he said about Thomas Edison that he felt was Thomas Edison's greatest invention, greater than those three things, was the invention of, of what he called, excuse me, what he called the research laboratory, where you gather together experts in their field and they work together and they collaborate on creating whatever the project is that they're working on. Now, Alexander Graham Bell is very famous for this and Alexander Graham Bell and Thomas Edison were good friends and everybody's probably heard of the thing, the Bell Labs uh, the Bell Labs was one of the most famous research uh, laboratories in the country because it was the Bell Labs where they developed the transistor. And tra the development of the transistor led to the development of the integrated circuit, the chip. So in Michael's mind, the research laboratory was one of the greatest inventions in, in, in mankind because of the advancements that it allowed in technology and advancement in society, and, which is why Michael liked to call the studio, especially his studio, he called it the laboratory, because Michael loved to explore and, and discover things, and that was one of the things that we were always encouraged to do. You were, you were the scientist. You we and were. Bruce and, 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 and. And Rod and mm -hmm. that we, we all were and anyone that worked and that's what Michael viewed it as and he always was very encouraging too about developing things new things something that people haven't heard yet uh, something that's new that's fresh a new fresh idea that's what uh, that's what Michael's wanted his music to embody and, and I, I myself I mean this is why Michael and I developed such a, a great relationship is because uh, I was that, but that was that was in my blood too. Being a, a exploration and discovery of, of things mechanical, electrical, electronic, musical. Uh, I, I grew up uh, being that same kind of person. You were at the Quincy Jones 90th uh, celebration, right? Yes, I was. It was basically a, it was basically a tribute to Michael Jackson, was it not? There well, were eight songs were Michaels. Yes, no, it was tremendous. And I had to tell you, the, the moment at uh, Quincy's uh, uh, 90th birthday celebration at the Hollywood Bowl, the moments that absolutely, uh, it, it took my breath away. I mean, they were playing a lot of songs, but when they would play a Michael Jackson song. The buzz. And the audience would sing absolutely. along. Absolutely. Now, there's what, 20,000 people in the Hollywood Bowl? I could, I could swear 10,000 of those people were singing along. Absolutely. And whatever the, the, you know, rock with you or starting something or whatever the hook of the song was, the audience would, would join in and was like, oh my gosh, this is... Well, you had Greg, you had John Robinson. Like, it almost felt like a, you know, like a Michael Band oh, yeah, reunion well, yeah. type of it was, thing. It was a great group of musicians. Yeah. And, and, and Stevie and, walks out and like, oh my God. It was, it was a tremendous night, and the experience of being there was absolutely wonderful. Oh, so what are you doing now with your... Well, I uh, am continuing uh, working in music. I work with uh, some independent artists, um, and there's a couple projects in development uh, that I'm working on in terms of uh, there's a uh, couple movie projects that you know people are putting together. and. Uh, they're, they're, these are vehicles that are, are music driven, so I'm working on the musical end of, of these things. And uh, I have uh, uh, some projects of my own that, that I'm working on. I'm trying to do more writing and, and get more stories uh, together about uh, some of the things I've experienced in my life. Keep us posted. It was nice meeting you. We never met. Um... We could do probably you know twenty more hours with it or so oh, much. Well, yeah. So this is, anytime you want to talk, I want to listen. Okay, right. Like, yeah, well, so this is this is a great meeting you as well. Nice meeting you too. So thank you for doing this. We okay. appreciate it. Well, All right. Thank you. Thank. You. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Okay. Give it up for Matt. Everybody. Thank you.
Anyone seen Big Al? Big Al. Did he leave? I don't blame him. <laughs> oh, thank you. He wanted to play some videos. Is, is this mine or is this? No, I didn't. What time is that? Uh, 1.30. 1.30, okay. He's running the board. Uh, see if you can find it, please. Big Al. Thanks, Ron. Oh, John's here? Oh, I didn't know John was here. Yeah, I'm sorry. John, John, John. John, we didn't know you were here. Come up, come on up. I'm sorry. <laughs> so am I staying? Okay. Am I staying? Am what? I staying? Here, can you, go can you take over for her for two seconds? <laughs> I didn't know you were here. No one told me, man. John Nuto, give it up. Thank you. I'm staying for four. Our next, I didn't know you were here. I'm sorry. We would have no, no. How's it going? Our next guest needs no introduction, but we're going to give him anyway. The president and co-founder of Heal LA, Mr. John Muto. I think that works. Yeah. Check. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yes? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to be uh, trying to talk to you guys more than uh, maybe the people online. But sure. Go ahead. We got you. Talk to the people. Uh, please let me know. But I'll let you. No, check. go ahead. Tell us what. What's going on in Hill, LA? Okay, awesome. Um, just want to say thank you to Ron, first of all, for inviting all of us and coming together. Really appreciate it. So thank you, Ron. No, thank you, Ron. Thank you, everybody. Thank you guys for coming. And uh, thank you for everyone for coming out. You know, I know a lot of people are coming out from different cities, maybe even different countries. So thank you for that. Um, if you don't know me, my name is John Muto. Uh, I'm the co-founder and president of the Heal Los Angeles Foundation. Uh, this is an organization that Prince and I founded back in uh, when we were in college right here at LMU. Uh, we started as a student service organization uh, for three years and then uh, when Prince graduated, uh, he wanted to make it to an official nonprofit foundation. So we are now called the Heal Los Angeles Foundation. Uh, our mission is to impr improve the lives of younger people by creating impactful programs. Our impact areas are two things, self-care and education. Uh, something that I just love about Prince and you know from the service that we do is that you know we, we don't have the sexy numbers. Uh, we're, not, we're not the nonprofit that's going to say, hey, we're millions of kids. We would obviously love to get there, but we're starting right at home uh, in Los Angeles, and everything's through data measurement of what we do, and with our impact areas of self care and education, we create programs. Um, I'm wearing one of our shirts right now. I just came back from uh, a program called the Power Up Fitness Program. We have a fitness program, cooking class, and we're about to start up a mental health program, which I'm really excited to talk about. Uh, but what, going back to what Prince and I really believe in is making a deep impact uh, in every children's lives. Um, so we're gonna start off there. Uh, so right now we're at a school in Northeast Los Angeles called Laredo Street Elementary. As I mentioned, we go through data measurement of how we select our locations. And right now, um, with our programs, uh, it's all very intentional of what the community needs, and we're very big on that. Um, something that I think everyone would enjoy here is obviously mental health is, is such a big thing nowadays for young kids and adults. Um, so one of our new mental health program is gonna be called Smile. Uh, as we all know, that was my, one of Michael's favorite songs by Charlie Chaplin. And we got the fans involved in that, selecting the names. And SMILE is actually going to be uh, an acronym for Supporting Minds with Inspiration, Love, and Encouragement. We're doing, uh, it's focused around mental health. So the odd weeks, it will be a 12-week program. The odd weeks will be yoga meditation along with some arts and crafts for the kids to do. And then on the even weeks, we're bringing in dog therapy for the kids to really, and each one has a curriculum to it. So as we mentioned, we're very intentional on in how we go about our programs. A couple of things that I'm really excited to talk about, and I think hopefully uh, if you guys have any suggestions, please feel free to let me know. Uh, the secret ingredients in our foundation is always 
uh, the Michael Jackson fans because they're the ones that really support our work. A uh, couple of the initiatives that we want to build out with ELA is Career Day. We really want to bring back that in the school system. Uh, and the other part that I want to create with the foundation is to uh, make August 29th Michael Jackson Day. Um, truly trying to work with that. Um, my time with the Dodgers, uh, we always did something big for Jackie Robinson Day. And during my time there, I'm always thinking, wow, like, we should eventually do a Michael Jackson Day um, and build that out. So that's in the plans. Um, we're thinking about maybe doing a mural at our school that we're located at and then make and build it out from there on, a, on something like Michael Jackson Day. So we're trying to work with uh, the mayor, Karen Bass, on that to get that going, but a lot of exciting plans. Um, I'm going to keep it honest with you guys like I always do. I know the MJ community wants um, something like Graceland, and I'm with you, I'm with everyone. Uh, right now, if you think about it, we got Forest Lawn, the Broadway show, uh, and the one show over in Vegas. I know a lot of people are going after this, but you know, I think what Prince and I have always talked about is that the MJ community needs a place to go to. Um, so we were hoping that, you know, with MJ Day and some other fundraising events, we can get MJ fans to Havenhurst. Um, the, the elephant in the room is Neverland an option. I do think so down the line, uh, working with Ron Burkle and his team. But with Havenhurst, uh, we have access to that property. Um, as you guys all know, we, one of our biggest fundraisers and to leave the legacy of Michael Jackson is Thriller Night. It's one of our favorite events. Um, something that I should have shared in the beginning, all of our donations uh, goes back to straight to our programs and special events. Prince has taken care of the operational and the general expense for the foundation, which we're truly thankful for, but every single donation from a penny to whatever dollar amount you're comfortable with goes back to our special programs and special events. But next year, what we're gonna be rolling out, which we'll be making an announcement uh, very soon, is that besides Thriller Night, we're thinking about doing a few movie nights at Havenhurst. Uh, movies would include Michael's favorite movies or movies that Michael's in. Uh, this will be at Havenhurst, and then we'll probably be rolling out maybe three to five of them. Um, and then fans, let's say the movie starts at 5, ends at 7, we'll give fan access two hours prior to roam around Havenhurst. Uh, so more to come on that, but gi giving you guys that opportunity to visit Havenhurst since there is no public uh, space to, I guess, visit one of Michael's um, space that he lived in. So I think if you haven't seen Havenhurst during the day, uh, you're missing out. I know Thriller Night happens obviously during night, but uh, man, Havenhurst during the days, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, but there's, you know, a lot of great stuff happening for the foundation. Just came on board full time back in April since I was doing this part time for the last four years. Uh, so a lot of great things happening. I'm open to always people's suggestions and thoughts. My emails are always open as well. Uh, but just want to hear from all the MJ fans and the community since your guys' opinions and thoughts truly matter to, to all of us. So uh, we're always here to hear your suggestions. What, what can we as fans do to make Michael Jackson Day happen? What can Local you? fans and worldwide fans. Anything? I'm going to have to get back to you on that. Okay. I'm going to have to We've get back to you. We've been trying for four years. So. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. But, I mean, we're here. Like... Everyone wants to help. We just want to know what, like, just put us on the right path with the right people. I think Mayor Bass and I think what's going on down at Gary are the two places that, that probably should start if it, like, if it's yeah. going to happen. Like, like, okay. Totally, yeah. totally. Ron brought up a great question. How can fans support on making uh, a Michael Jackson a uh, come to life? I told him uh, I got to think, think about that, but definitely anything that if you guys have ideas of how an MJ day, you know, I always tell people, think about your biggest uh, wish list. Like, just name it, and I don't think it's ridiculous at all to, to hear it out. 
uh, because I think MJ Day would be something different every year. Uh, I have so many ideas myself that, like I said, when we did Jackie Robinson Day at the Dodgers, I was just thinking, wow, we could do this for Michael, we can do this, but you know, um, that can only last so, so many years, so new ideas is always very important. So I think, Ron, to answer your question, right there would be a great help of getting people's ideas. And like I said, I want to reiterate, no idea is uh, undoubtful, everything's a possibility, um, but we'd love to hear from every one of you guys of any ideas you have for MJ Day. Thanks for that, John. I'm trying to think. I think I think I'm good unless you're you good. Have. Okay. No. Um, so there's no thr thriller night this year, but there will be next year in addition to the movies and night and stuff like that. Yes, great question. So Ron asks uh, if there will be a thriller night this year. No, no thriller night. We made an announcement earlier in the year uh, only because of the uh, biopic film that's uh, that will be filming during Q4 of this year. So that's why we had to hold off on thriller night. But uh, looking forward to having it in 2024 uh, with the long of our movie nights at Havenhurst for sure. I mean, they're asking, do you think that the bio will be out next year or probably 2025 unless they're on strike and yeah I, I think the 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 strike is obviously gonna push it back but uh to how long i, I have no we don't know yeah right. yeah but it's happening right, right. <laughs> it's, it's definitely happening, happening. It's, it's happening any any update on uh the ruler 40 i don't know if you know that but that, that's more of an estate question i know but i thought you might have heard something i have not to be not. honest okay. with you but I people have, are always i have asking. no clue i have no i'll clue. ask you guys watching tuesday uh mr branca will be there and I have all my questions uh, ready for rapid fire, and I'll report back with the answers if he lets us. Are you are you going to Vegas to, for the show or no? I will not be in not Vegas. Vegas? Okay. Uh, we're having an event with uh, Hard Rock Cafe Hollywood. Uh, thank you, oh, Corey, right. over there. Oh my God! Yes. Yeah, so hey, bring up Corey. T. Corey. Yep. So uh, I forgot about that. Prince will be in Vegas, so he's holding the ground over there, and then I'll be holding the ground here right, in Los right. Angeles. Right, right. So I'll let Corey talk. No, it's from yep. say, Come on up here. Corey T in the house, everybody. Doing amazing work at the Hard Rock. Um, hello. Hello. Good to see you. I see you uh, in every city now, every state. You we're like we're, we're like long lost friends. <laughs> he was at the uh, the ten year anniversary of MJ One. Mm hmm And um, Thriller Forty. So, Thriller Forty. And mm -hmm. all right, so on on Tuesday. Uh, for you guys with me, we're going to be at Forest Lawn at uh, 9 in the morning until about 11 in the morning. We have the airplane coming with the banner for Michael at 11 o'clock. Nice. We're going we're gonna to sing again. We're going to try to do uh, Cry and People of the World. And then we're driving to Vegas, uh, but the show's at 7 o'clock at night. But for mm -hmm. you guys in California, starting at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m., you take over. Go. So is it on? Do you guys hear me good? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, yes, I'm Corey. I work at Hard Rock Cafe on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, Tuesday, August 29th, we are having MJ's magical 65th birthday celebration. Um, this is an event that I curated. I'm very like proud of it, and I'm proud of the fact that like I've received the amount of support that I have. I know that the majority of us do go to Vegas around this time. I've gone like the past three years, so it is kind of like, uh, that I can't be there this year, but I feel like it's a cause that's completely worth it because I feel like the more of these events, including like this event, like the more that we get to do this and kind of fellowship with each other, the better. Um, so yeah, from two to six at the Ovation Hollywood, um, Hard Rock is partnering with the Ovation Mall to put this event on. Um, we'll have lawn games from Lucky Strike. We're gonna have um, some classic arcade games coming down from Dave and Buster's. Um, I've got some giveaways that I have officiated and created. So there's gonna be a little trivia, but I've got music playing, we've got character artists. And if you've seen any of the beautiful MJ murals um, around from downtown at the Monte Carlo to over at the Grove, Nate, um, Captain EO, is gonna be on the property and he's gonna be painting a mural, like a smaller mural alive at this event for like the first half of it and then we're going to auction that painting off to one of the guests at this event and that full donation will be donated to the hill los angeles program so 
a lot of good things, y'all. Um, if I'm being honest, I'm super nervous. It's my first time ever doing something like this. Um, You're doing but great work. I'm just super excited that it's possible. I'm from Indiana, for the people who did not know. I moved here in 2018, so it's like I really relate. Like, I've really been a fan my whole life. Um, it's not anything that I play with. It is very serious <laughs> for me. So it's a dream come true, truly, to, like I said, to be able to do something like this, as well as to support a cause that is so close to the family. So I'm super thankful and grateful. And for those coming to Vegas after the 7 o'clock show. Oh, my God, yes. So <laughs> for the people who are going to Vegas, I, if you know about Hard Rock Cafe, we are all over the world. Um, I can only speak for my region though, and my region also happens to be Las Vegas. So those are like my sisters in my department out there that work at that cafe. And I reached out to them and was just like, hey, um, I have a lot of people who, you know, are about to be in Las Vegas. So Michael Jackson, and I believe the shows end around like 930, you know, and we kind of like, we go to a pizza place and like just kind of chill there. And I was like, how cool would it be though for us to have like a spot that's actually music related that can play Michael's videos and things like that. Um, so they agreed. Um, really, it is not on me. It's truly you, Ron. Ron don't, is also responsible no, for that worry, too. So no, I no, can't no. take any of that man. real credit on that. I just gave him the, you know, the connect. But he got out there. They set it all up for you guys. So I really do hope you guys go there and have a good time. It is good food. Um, I don't think their cooks are better than our cooks in Los Angeles, uh, but I love their cooks regardless. So it is definitely worth, you know, taking the time out there. They're really great people too, and they have a really good staff. So, thank you, Kurt. Got you. Next year, I'm putting you. Uh, I want you. So we want international hard rock. International, all over the globe. There for people to meet, that would be the place like, where we could do this in other That's countries. The goal, like, That's everybody. my goal, guys. Right. I do. Um, have even more news. I can't share it all the way right now, but just know it's if you follow me on any other social media, you'll definitely be hearing um, as early as like Tuesday morning. It's a lot of cool stuff that is still Michael's happening. Michael's birthday. So, Michael's yes, birthday. Hmm, so. Not a coincidence. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks to Corey T. Thank you. Give it up. Did you leave? No, Okay, John. Yeah, John. John. No. No, Where's Big Al? Back there. I need Big Al. John, just give him credit. He wants him to Okay, so here we have some bags that Wendy's going to hand out from Hill LA. Thanks to John. Thanks, John. John. Thank you, John. Big Al. Start with uh, the video. Which one? Um, number uh, Taj. Taj Brighton. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. So there's a bunch of people that couldn't be with us, but they sent uh, videos here. So just check out on the big screen some people you know. There you go. Can't hear it. Want to try the other screen, Big Al, in the back? Everything is working fine over here. Alright. Hey, you guys. Alright, so uh, we're going we're gonna to get the videos set up, uh, play a couple videos from the people that couldn't be here, and then, uh, then get ready to sing. We're going to try to do this, although we're not... Here in the screen for some reason. We gotta shut the mic off. Then we gotta shut the mic off. Technical problems.
while we're talking, let's say hi to Elizabeth. Hi. Elizabeth is part of five gen where's little Aubrey? Come on, come up here. Come with your Mimi. Up. Oh, we got sound. Hold on. Everyone, Taj Jackson here. Everyone, Taj Jackson here. And I just want to take this time to thank all of you as we celebrate Michael Jackson and his birthday. You guys have proven throughout the years that you're the best fan in the world, bar none. I truly appreciate all the love and support you guys have continued to show him throughout the years. So, on behalf of me and my family, thank you. Go to... Um um, Everyone, Taj Jackson here. Yeah. Come, take the, the Prior to Brighton and then Brighton. Prior to Brighton. <laughs> Patty LaBelle and Patty LaBelle which leads into Brighton. Everyone, Taj Jackson here. Maybe just lower it a little so we don't get that block.
say thank you to my mother who's here tonight. She's the one in blue. Thank you for giving me life. I really mean that. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. There are two things which the NAACP stands for, which are the most important things in my life. Freedom and equality. In every person there is a secret song in their heart. It says, I am free. It sings, I am one. This is the natural feeling of every child. To be free as the wind, to be one with every other child. All the troubles in the world is caused by forgetting this feeling. And when I perform, my connection is with people just to remind me of that, to be free and to be one. In this spirit, the NAACP has done its cherished work. Thank you for having the faith to see that I share your work, for I deeply feel I do. I accept this award on behalf of the world's healing, when all our brothers and sisters will be as free and equal as we are today. I love you so much, and I'm very honored, and thank you for this award. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, Miguel. Tell the story. I got to tell you, before we watch the next video, one of those kids was Brighton McClure, and the next video is from Brighton, and obviously that was a long time ago. So, but Brighton is—he uh, was on a show called Family Matters back in the day, and he's now on. Uh, well, he's doing a bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff, but he's also on a soap opera with Young and the Restless. Young and the Restless. And uh, Devon. Anyway, for those that watch. Yeah, for those that watch, no <laughs> But Brighton and his mom and his dad would come to Neverland several times a year, and they were absolutely our favorite guests because they were we, they were very low maintenance. I mean, they would. I remember it was their their anniversary, wedding anniversary, and uh, Eric said, "Hey, can you give me a ride into the local grocery store?" And I said, "What do you want to ride into the?" Store for. He goes, well, it's our anniversary. I want to have steak and lobster for tonight for dinner. I said, just tell the chef she wants steak and lobster. He goes, well, I, I don't want to impose. I don't. I, I don't want to come up here and expect to get you know steak and lobster. I like, oh, come on, really? So that's the kind of people they were. They're just. I mean, they were a blast to have up there, and they, they very seldom. They brought some fans actually from Spain one time, but it was usually just the three of them, and they just they had they play remote control. Uh, cars and stuff. I mean, they just had a blast. But anyway, the, the next video, I stayed in touch with the, the family ever, ever since. I still am. So. 30 years later, yeah. this is Brighton. Hello, this is Brighton James. I just want to say how much I love each and every one of you. And I also just want to say thank you for continuing to love and celebrate and to respect my friend. I know that my will live on forever because of Okay, go to uh, Francois. <laughs> this here is 91-year-old Mr. Francois Glurieur. He per performed this with Michael many years ago. And uh, if you close your eyes, you can hear Michael sing.
pretty amazing. All right, ready to sing? Let's go. All right. Wait. Wait. We gotta hand out gloves. Oh, I don't know. What? What? Go ahead. Big Al's got well, some. I was going to say, there's an awful lot of lanyards up here, and they say VIP on them, so if you think that you're not a VIP, I made one for everybody. All right, so everybody come so, up, get a lander, and we'll hand out everybody gloves. Everybody that's here is a VIP. I don't want anybody to leave. As a matter of fact, if you have somebody that wants to go to me, I have 300 of them made, so uh, yeah. make sure everybody gets, gets a lander. No, no, here, Wendy, let him come up so we can get a glove at the same time. <laughs> All right? Yeah, everybody get a glove. Everybody, hey, everybody get a glove. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you, Mr. All right. Get gloves. We're ready. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you more. Thank you. All right. I got to get Got to get key jacket. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay, you guys, hang on. Let's hope this works. I got to recharge the battery. Hang on one second. Hold on, you guys. You gotta reload the phone. All right, we got the battery charged. Would you go offline? No. Can we, can we get Cry and People of the World in the back there? Or do we want to do it up here? We're kind of going to have to stand back there, so it would make more sense. All right. Hey, I didn't know you were here, man. Surprise! You. We got, we got some surprise guests. Hold on, we got to stop. Pork chop and John John in the house. Surprise! He told me he was out of state. This guy this guy doesn't return my calls. Oh, so they no, 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 no! Don't you start? The call. Hey, hey, you're a guest here. Hey, hey, this isn't June. This is the, the well. What is this? August. This is August. You're a guest. You, I'm a, I'm a you're a guest. You give me that. It's past June. Grab a glove. Grab a VIP bag yeah. in the front there. And we're going to head back here. We're doing crying people of the world. Can we give a shout out to... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to sit this out. My stuff's in that far corner. You guys, real quick. Here's the amazing... Here's Megan. Megan, say hi to hi everyone. Guys. You ready to sing? Oh, yeah. Oh, we want to hear you. <laughs> we want to hear you. You've had months to practice. Oh, uh, yeah. We're going to introduce the person behind the cake here. Uh, Big Al's going to try to get us live down. You guys still here? All right. We're getting, no. We'll take pictures from the way from here up. Okay, I look like Frank DeLeo. Okay, stop with this. We're going to try, thank you for coming, man. Yeah, we're, I'm here all day, We're still on Facebook, okay. I'm here all day. All right. So. John said my three favorite words of the day. You guys oh, said have been with me for four years. That's all right. Hey, we're all friends. My three favorite words of the day, Michael Jackson Day. Big Al's calling. Yeah, we're going to do, once everybody lines up, are we, are we ready for it? I'm ready. Okay. Sound will, will be good? We don't know? Okay. All right, Bex, you want to coordinate this? No one listens to me. We're, we're, we're going to line up for a cry and then people of the world. Do a circle? You want them in a circle? What do you think? I mean, I think from the room we could go all. Did you see who's here? No. Uh, pork Shop and Jonjo. Do you see Jonjo? Yeah. Who else? Oh, I thought. Uh, I thought, he, I thought, oh, he, I thought he was coming. No, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, they uh, yeah, surprised. Said, Don't say yeah, yeah. I was mad at him for not coming. They said, oh, man, I'm in Texas doing a gig. I think we should just go around like, I don't know if we can No, but we want to have Michael, like we need Michael. Oh, we want a straight line? No, we can do up and, like Forest Lawn, we can do up and down. Hold on, wait a minute, I got the guy. Hey, Porkchop, we're going to put you to work. 
You're going to make believe it's Forest Lawn. You're going to gather everybody. Here I want to hear you yell. I'm you're here. Doing. You're a working day. This is a working this, day. This is everybody thing. gather around. No, it's not. Same thing. I stay in my lane. Here he goes. Good afternoon, everyone. Could everyone come this way, please, on the behalf of Ron? The behalf of Pork Chop. Nope, Ron. I'm off duty. Not a... <laughs> <laughs> You're the junior man. <laughs> I need my time to rest. That's <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? You can have him in about love 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll switch. I'll take the trade. I'm going to be honest. All right. So I need something yes, right so inside. We'll take the trade. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Wendy was handing them out. What, right? No, but these are the rest. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll take them to Forest Lawn. I'm going okay. Tuesday. We're okay. doing the same thing over there. We got okay. the airplane coming and all. Uh... Okay. okay. All right. Hey, Matt, I didn't say hi to you. I'll, I'll, hey, I'll no, talk to you in a I bit. Know. Did be a fist bump. Yeah, yeah, right. big old fist okay. bump. Thank you for all right, here, we're going to line up like along here, like one line here. We'll kind of leave the center open. Everybody's taking selfies. Big Al's working the crowd. Oh, wait a minute, John John's here. Hold on. John John's here. We... Where's John John? I can't do anything for him. You better be ready to sing. We got a singer. You got to lead us, man. Y'all got to help me out. People all over the world. No, first we're doing cry. We're doing cry first? Cry, we just clap. No, you know the words. No? Uh, yeah, people all over the world. It's going to be the same way having a cemetery. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, but the people all over the world, I mean, people all over the world, people from country to country, one and the same in the world, and one song we sing, life should be harmony in a world of self-destruction. People lift your voices. We'll know the words. Michael's going to sing too. Yeah. Michael is it. Okay. All right. All right. So we got John John in the house. We got a real singer, founding member of Troop. We're all going to sing. Everyone, all of us. We're all going to sing. People online, this is it. For you guys on Zoom, we're going to do it again at Forest Lawn Tuesday. These two guys surprised me. No yes, one says a lot. He didn't answer his phone. We gonna sing. He told me he's a, he out of town. This guy told me he's in Gary. And then here they are. Surprise. 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 Wow. wow. We can do that. All right. All right. Pork chop. You got everyone lined up, man. We're, 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 we're doing cry first, then flex, people to work. What do you want? Just kind of like Forest Lawn. Like maybe a horseshoe. Excuse me once again. I'm supposed to be off duty, but Ron. No, I choose. Like I said, like Ron. Hey, I want your autograph. Hey, what's up, dude? Um, can we form a horseshoe, please? Starting from here, ending over here, a horseshoe for Ron. For Michael. For Michael's fans. We know it's for Michael, but Ron wants it done. All along that wall. Yeah, just make, make, make a little bit large. Start from here. Can you write here right here? Shift here. Can you write right shift down a little bit? We're going to go start from this edge here, all the way around, and this other edge, whatever, like that. Please. Then along here. Hey, that's Aubrey, y'all. That's Aubrey. Hey, that's Aubrey. John, John, you'll be in the middle. Uh, uh, Come on, man. You work. This uh, is a word. This ain't no. Uh... Uh, we're all on the same together. Does everyone have a glove? Wendy, make sure everyone has it on your hand, <laughs> on your right hand. Look, here, I want to show witness. Look, Wendy Chow not wearing the white glove. Look, the only one. Look, the only one. She can have it in her right hand. Okay. I'm holding your camera. All right. I couldn't get it on. All right. Was he surprised? John, yes, of course I was surprised. Don't tell John John's going to lead us. All right, Big Al. We're all going to lead. Where's Big Al? Big Al, ready. All right, you guys at home. First we're doing to cry, then we're going to hand out flags for people of the world, and then it's cake time. Is it sugar free? <laughs> I couldn't hold yeah. it in. Sorry, I couldn't hold it in. Everybody, this is John John Harold from Troop. If we all follow John John's lead, we'll be all right. 
Here we go. Whatever happens on when they clap, we clap. Or whatever John John does, we do. Go ahead. We could clap. We could clap. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, just hold on to that with it. Hang on. Don't go nowhere. And we should put a film of the baby doing the dance. Baby, you understand? Yeah. Believe me, my daughter, she did some things this week, and everybody's calling, and because she had her uh, Channel 5 last Saturday. 
it was like um, Pedro told me, hey, see a picture of the baby, you know? So I sent a picture of me and her, and they call it a little portrait, and they put it on the, on the air. I didn't see it. I was getting phone calls. That's the baby. Yeah. People are like, hey, don't you want to put her in like movies and stuff? Who were you? I don't know. Are you? The only reason we would do something if she wanted to. That's it. I did, I did what, like, what he did with movie stuff. I was forced. So. I don't know. I don't know if it's on, but hey, can you? Hey, everyone. It says yeah. live. You're on. Yeah, you're on. How many this, people are out there? I don't know. This is pork chop and and. Uh -oh. Who is Am? Who is it? Ja man. <laughs> Him. <laughs> Wendy. There you go. I want a Dodger uh, flag. I want a Dodger flag. <laughs> John, John, you know me. That's some chili in there. Chili. Hey, John, John. Shadows, shadows on. What up, Shy? Sh she's on. Shy. 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 Hell. Let me see. Let me see what. What was the other one? That's what we're looking to. That's we're looking for chili. It's okay. I know. He might be from Canada. Canada. Woo woo. Hey, neighboring country, man. I'm representing. I'm from Canada too. You bring me back. That's right. I got my. I got my. You want a trade? My L O V E love. You want a trade? Oh, it's up to you. Uh oh. There you go. No, I'm not. Oh, I thought you said you were from Canada. No, but I have a. I have a. It doesn't matter which one you like. Shadell is watching. She's watching. I'll take whatever one. Chile. All right. Chile. 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 So I have gone from Canada. Oh, can't show the baby. Can't show the baby. Play a video for right, John. All right. Hey. Hello. Whew. Whoa. Okay, where's Portop? Portop got the feed. Shadow's on. She, she's watching. Should we, she's on, she's should watching. we say you get well, or yeah, we don't want people to know? Okay. All right. I was looking for you to see you. Okay, make the announcement. Tell them, people of the world, people. Hey, People of the world. Now, we're just wave flags on this one. When Michael does the when Michael does the uh, the chorus, all right. You guys at home, you guys on Facebook, get your flags out. You guys on you, who's got the YouTube feed? Who's on YouTube? Elizabeth Hugh? Who has my YouTube feed? Where's Wendy? You're on you're on YouTube. Okay, actually, I should have a flag. Well, no. All right. Where's the rest of the box? Here, I'll grab one. Yeah. 
You guys at home watching, grab your flags. We're going to do this Tuesday on Zoom. Okay, we'll have the Zoom feed fixed. So we'll have everybody on Zoom. This is uh, practice for Tuesday. Actually, let me get on camera here. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. You guys, wave your flags. This is practice for you guys. We'll, we'll have the Zoom thing fixed out. I think we know what we did wrong. So we should be good outside, all right? So, all right. Get ready. Here's pork chops. All right. Here's all the rest of the flags. You people of the world. You guys, here's your... Okay, Big Al, whenever you're ready. Not now, pictures. She is unbelievable. Come on, Heather. It's dark. It's dark. It's dark. All right, everybody. We're going to let Michael sing the main part. We all sing the chorus. All right? Follow John John's lead. Same thing. Follow John John.
Good job, everybody. All right. Who, who wants cake? Okay, we're going to play the second half of Francois when he plays Happy Birthday, Michael. We're, we're going to walk over to the cake. Or no? We can hear it over there? Okay. All right, everybody, walk over to the cake. We're going to do Happy Birthday to Michael with the big cake. Real cake. That is a real cake. Hello. We don't play. Low battery? Gone? The last set? All right. Okay, that's all right. We just match it up. Just put it on my yellow bath. Okay, we, we lost the YouTube feed for those watching. We ran out of battery. But we got the Facebook feed. Oh, oh, no. You want to do your song first? What? You want to no, sing? No. What okay, you? we're going to sing. We're going we're gonna to sing Happy Birthday. Then we're going to... Uh... This, this is the real thing. We don't play, John. <laughs> okay? Hey, this ain't... Hey, 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 hey. It's Michael Jackson. Okay, saying Eminem, saying Bieber. Okay, we don't put. This is the real thing, John. Oh wait, hold on, Big Al. Play the, play the Michael Copen, play the Michael Copenhagen first. The, 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 like when they do the actual cake. I'm sorry. First Copenhagen, then Francois. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, uh, crank it. So it's going to be on this one here? All right, everybody, check out the big screen. There we go. Right here. It's right in the middle of the show. Shush, shush, shush. It's my birthday. I'm thousands of miles away from my family. Okay, stop. All right, everybody, gather around the cake. We'll do our happy birthday to Michael.
Just so you know, we we're going to have sparkle. We have the sparkle. I was worried. Where's but the marching band? Wendy, that's next year. This is you guys. This is the this is the pre. Wait till you see what we got planned for next year. I'm just telling you right now. We ain't playing. We're not playing. No, no, no. They ain't playing. They ain't playing. You didn't think they should be here. Be honest. You think we have cupcakes? Yeah, no. You thought we have cupcakes. I thought he does. I never knew. I was like, he's gonna have cupcakes. We were almost doing cupcakes. I know. All right, big gal. Everybody ready to sing? Keep your eye on Francois. Where's Francois? Start. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear my Happy birthday to you. One more verse. Happy birthday, dear my All right. Yeah. All right. Who's going to cut? Who's cutting? Where's the, Where is. Where? She Fine. said it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. Come on. Find her for a second. Where's the knife at? Come on up here. Hang on, everybody. We were almost not going to have the cake. And one lady stepped up. Not only did the cake, did the tablecloths, the plates, the things on the back of the chairs. She said, this is Michael Jackson. We got to step up. So give it up. Irene, we thank you. We love you. I just, Go ahead. I just want to say that I'm really honored and, um, you know, I'm just happy that I'm here. You know, I love Michael and Ron does so much for us. So this is for Michael, it's for Ron, and it's for all the fans. And I, I have um, Elizabeth. I couldn't have done it without Elizabeth. And also... Where's Elizabeth? Elizabeth, come up here. Yeah, I could not have done it without her. Betsy Maddox, come up here. Betsy... Betsy, Elizabeth, where's the little one? Aubrey. 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 Every Aubrey has to be in every picture. Yay! Come on, Mom. Here's the future. Here's the future. I want to ask you something. I want you to make me a prompt. Oh, Wendy, do we have... Where's Wendy? Yes, I do. What? We, know you, we know you have your glove because I saw it. And we know you have the beaded jacket. But we need something to match the glove. So, an early birthday gift. Ooh. Ooh. Can I borrow what? Yeah. Open it up. Open it up. Want to help her? Want to help her? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Look at Uncle Porchop. Uh -oh. Uncle oh, Uncle Porchop. I gave her the gift. Sure. <laughs> Uncle Por yeah, Uncle Porchop. Oh, I'm like Ray J. I was here first. All right, that's true. That is a good point. That is a good point. <laughs> These are hot off the shelf at the MJ1 store in Las Vegas. Wow. They just came in. They're going to be available Tuesday night for those that are going. And they come in only size small and large. So, uh, young lady, you're going to be sitting next to me Tuesday at the show, so you have to wear that. You have to wear that. And we have another gift. Left another there. gift? No, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, another gift. I'll show you later. And just let me introduce Elizabeth. Elizabeth, hang on, you guys. This is Elizabeth. Tell the story of your family's connection to Michael Jackson and how far it goes back. And We go back. We do have five generations. We have a young one that's three that we, my daughter is my daughter's grandson that she is teaching the Michael routine. Five so generations one, of Michael two, Jackson. Her mother, three. Precious? Precious, come on. Come family here, picture, precious. get over here. Come here. Come on. So we have one, two, three, four, and the other one was supposed to be on Zoom, but I don't know. What yeah, Zoom got a mess up. Yeah. So five, five generations. Five That's beautiful. Teaching. So we strongly encourage everybody who has young ones, please teach them about Michael so they can grow up and, and continue the legacy that we're all trying to build. Yeah. yeah. Please. I want to I want to ask you one favor, okay? If I don't cry, when you get older. I want you to do today what I'm doing here today with my friends. You do it your friends. Promise? Uh, All, right. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. No, we have one more thing on. Okay. Wendy Chow, go ahead. We just, this is a card that we just signed. 
just thank you, Ron. Oh, no, come on. No, it, it's right, just a card. Thank you, thank you. It's thank just you. a card. All right, and thank you. And anyone that hasn't signed it, we're going to just leave it here right. somewhere. Thank you, Ron. No, thank you guys more. Come on. People of the world. People of the world. All right. Young lady, you're going to cut the cake. Please. Oh, hey, Ron. You want to cut? I made a new necklace for being my friend for two years. Oh, okay. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. You coming to Forest Lawn? Not, not, not as a, okay. Uh, because my mom, right. she uh, sprained her ankle and she, she says, All right, how, how are we doing the cake, Bets? Uh, oh, who's right. cutting? Who's serving? I wouldn't say. We'll yeah. serve. Yeah. Somebody yeah. cut, we'll serve. We're bringing plates up. People come up with their plates. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Wendy, get all the pictures of this because I have no pictures. No, come on, come on, quick. We're about to cut it. We're about to cut it. With the gloves and everything? Look at this, it's a picture. Hold on, let me get this photo. Get that photo. Wendy, get this here. Get that photo. Get there. This is the lady, you guys. This is responsible. I read is responsible for making this happen. No, no, no. I asked her first. No, I asked her in the back with a long pop. Okay. All right. On three? One, two, three. Michael. Get your pictures, everybody. We're about to cut this beautiful cake. If you don't have your pictures, look at me smile. What do you want people to bring their plates up? Yeah. One, two, three. Michael. Yay. All right. Okay. All right. So bring your plates up and. Uh, um, all right, one more to John. We'll tell John what do you want us to do? We wanted to play the what? Oh, they, they want to know what the ruler nights were. It was so I thought it'd be come cool. show Big Al. Okay, Big Al, one more video for our friends at Heal LA. For our friends at Heal LA, John's gonna. I hope he can show you which one. Yes, okay. Uh, if you go on our website, oh, I have Disney. Wow. Okay. Um, so we're going to have cake. We're going to play. John wants to play one video from Hill LA. And then I will play the, uh, I will play Crystal's birthday uh, video. The battery's charging. Our friends on YouTube, we just ran out. The battery went before it was too late. I, I didn't have a chance, but so far Facebook's been good. Uh, yeah, you know. All right. Hang on there. Thanks, you guys. I see the comments. Come on, people are lined up. Who, who's cutting? I need, I need some gloves because I'm going to have to touch I think them. Yeah, we only have 200 gloves here. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not that kind of glove. I need, I mean, you know, like for... Marty just went to get some for me. Oh, okay. Like, okay. Over try. All right. Food gloves. Wow. And on your gift bag. Betsy was responsible for the flags. And <laughs> this here is. <laughs> Betsy, what's this called? This word that I don't like? Fondant. Okay, I'm going to go wash my hands. All right, fine. So Betsy's going to wash. Um, we might try and bring whatever is left to Forest Lawn for you guys coming. Or, no, no, not to Forest Corey, they want me to bring it to Hard Rock Tuesday night. No. Yeah, people. No. What? We've already got a cake. At night? Yeah. In Vegas? Oh, in Vegas, I don't know. I don't know if they have cake. No, right. So, if it'll last, if it, I mean, assuming there's left. There's, there's a lot of cake. There? What? Why are you going to transport it? Oh, yeah. Ron's driving. No. I'm driving. I'm I'm driving. Yeah, but how are you going to eat that? Yeah. I'm going to be at Forest Lawn Tuesday morning. Are you holding the cake while you're driving? Yeah, so I'll have one hand on Zoom, and I'll hold the cake with the cake. I'm in my Tesla. I'm in my Tesla, so the car drives itself. Yeah, I don't have to. The advantage of the Tesla, I don't have to drive. Yeah, so that's talent. Right, yeah. Well, oh, hey, we're talent. That's crazy talent. All right, you guys, we're, we're waiting on a glove to cut the cake. You almost hate to cut it, right? Wow. It's a beautiful. Oh, Miss Hill. Okay. Wow, okay. Oh, where's Miguel? Miguel. We kind of got lost in the rotation. We forgot Miss Hill, Michael's teacher. Um, so we're going to play.
Jackson's an American Dream, and then Miss Hill. Bring your plate. Bring your plate. Yeah, hang on, you guys. Miss Hill's coming. We got all messed up in the rotation with the. Often. Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, hang on, hang on. Okay, you guys, listen. Go ahead, big Al. This is 90-year-old Mrs. Hill. Listen, listen. Listen. Thank you, Miss L. Okay, Big Al. John, uh, John will take one. And then, uh, then the Crystal's video and we're back. Whatever John told you really does. Okay, that was... What time is it? I was going to tell a couple of stories. You have a clock? What, what time is it somewhere? Three o'clock. Yeah. You want to... You want to Let's play John first, and then yeah, we'll do you and me. Okay. This is it? We're looking at it? Okay, guys, this is uh, Hill LA. <laughs> I'm going to log off and on real quick. <laughs> 